Walnut Street. Going for a squawk. And today, I will show you the infamous crime scenes all around the city of Philadelphia. And I'll also show you movie location. It's just pretty much a tour, but we're gonna focus a little bit on crime. First, let's say rest in peace to Wonderland. Wonderland was a magical place where you could buy bongs and hook. No, no, no hookahs, bongs, wraps, all types of things. And now that marijuana is practically legal in Philadelphia, Wonderland is closed. The pandemic killed it. I don't think it was the pandemic. I got to tell you, there's a monthly, you can order a bong. There's a monthly bong service. I think that, that was the end of Wonderland, the monthly bong service. This is the Wanermaker house. And up there somewhere lived Uncle Eddie Savitz. Uncle Eddie Savitz? Well, he wasn't my uncle, but he was a uh, man who liked to have young boys do the inner underwear, and he would keep the underwear. Uh, it would be a thing, there would be like 10 boys lined up in his uh, 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 his uh, apartment at, at, at sometimes. Uh, when he died, by the way, he died of AIDS, so he also had AIDS when he was doing all this with the boys. Uh, when he died in AIDS in prison, they had to open up his self-storage unit, and inside his self-storage unit was 10 trash bags full of soiled underwear. Uh-oh. I used to work at a self-storage place. I would have uh, quit. I would have quit, and I, and I probably would have set fire to the entire storage place just to get the hell out of here. Oh, famous house right here, movie location. This is where Robert Balboa Robert Balboa is the son of Rocky Balboa. And in the movie Rocky Balboa, this is where Robert Balboa lives. If you've seen Rocky Balboa, which is my favorite Balboa movie, Rocky movie, uh, there is a scene where Rocky fights Mason the Lion Dixon in a computer fight. And Rocky Balboa's son, ungrateful pile of shit, his son. Let's not get into that. We'll talk about that later. His son watched the fight in that bar, the Irish pub. And it looks like, just like Wonderland, the Irish pub didn't make it. Let's do it. We're going infamous places. We're going to, there was a mass shooting in Philadelphia. Um, when was that? When was that mass shooting? Saturday? Uh, I don't know why we're classifying this one as a mass shooting. It's not the first time I've seen a shooting like this happened. You know what's funny? No, it's not funny. You know what's kind of sad? Is when there's a real big mass shooting, every time there's a big shooting, the media reports on it. And then there'll be a few days where there's not a big shooting. And then the media won't report on it. But right now... We're at the stage where the media, they want to report on every shooting um, and treat them like a mass shooting. I think the definition of a mass shooting is when uh, um, four people get shot. That is, uh, so there was, a, we're not there yet. We're going to get, this is the Church of the Holy Trinity and the organist of this church in the 1890-ish, 18, late 1800s. That's what we say, the late 1800s. He wrote the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Came from that church. Now the house is around here. Uh, a lot of apartments and condos. The wealthy, the extremely rich live here uh and my man onslaught lives in this area right the guy i professionally manage uh because i'm his manager i got him a great deal in a real estate place okay let's get oh we got another infamous corner uh this is rittenhouse square rittenhouse square the movie trading places was filmed in there uh the movie uh howard stern had the john de bella funeral that was held in Rittenhouse Square, and uh, it's one of the prettiest spots 
in the city of Philadelphia. Okay, so we're going to get coming. Now, if you remember about, oh no, this must have been three, four years ago now. It seems like yesterday. A few years ago, there was two guys who went in the Starbucks to uh, wait for their friend. And uh, they sat in the corner of a Starbucks for about 10 minutes waiting for the guy to come to a meeting. They didn't order anything to drink yet because they wanted to wait for the other guy to come. So they were just sitting in this Starbucks and um, this is the Starbucks that the two men were arrested and pretty much the reason they were arrested was because they were black and waiting that's the story uh, I'll show you oh he's not so yeah da, 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 da. So yeah, it happened in there. Two guys were waiting. And now the thing is, I know the guy, the guy who got arrested, I know his father. And the guy they were waiting for, his name was Andrew. I know him sort of kind of by working with his father. So I know everybody involved in the story. And they were just waiting for a real estate meeting. And and they uh, they were like, oh, you got to order something to drink. And they're like, well, we'll get something in, in a minute when the guy comes. And they called the cops. The cops came and the cops arrest them for just sitting there. Crazy. So, uh, now there's a rule in Starbucks, uh, there is, um, unlimited access to all the bathrooms. They're not allowed to, if there's a code, they have to give it to you. They can't judge who uses the bathrooms. So now it, uh, you know, now they have to be nice ass assholes. But you know what the thing is? A few weeks after, uh, my buddy's fr son got arrested, there was a guy who was stuttering. And this pissed me off more than my buddy's friend. There was a guy with a stutter. Now I have a, I stutter sometimes, right? I don't talk too good. Uh, but so his name was Sam. So when he went, you know how the stupid Starbucks people write the name on the cup? So he said his name was S -S Sam. So they wrote S S S S S Am, you know, making fun of him. And uh, that was a few weeks after everybody in Starbucks took a little uh, training on how to be civilized, those assholes. All right, so let's see. Where are we at? We got to do some crime. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got a spot. I got a spot. This is Pine Street. The streets in Philadelphia, the way they're uh, laid out is... For a while, all the streets are named after people or, or like things. But then after, I think it's like Market Street, everything's named after a tree. You got pine, you got chestnut, you got walnut, uh, spruce. There's so many. Oh my God, is that Rick Harris from uh, Pawn Stars? Oh my God. I was just at a bookstore and I swore to God I saw uh, Jimmy Rollins. To the point I went back and saw that it uh, to see if it was and it wasn't and the guy caught me staring at him so I had to explain myself like why am I oh whoa 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 look at this it's the first time I saw this this is a blue brick street uh, across the city of Philadelphia there are eight blue brick streets um, they are um, built from buildings that were part of a World's Fair. Now, somebody in the comments told me the World's Fair took place in New York, and they broke down the buildings and they shipped them here. Now, I also heard that these are from the 1876 Centennial, where they had all these buildings built, and uh, and they knocked, instead of knocking down the building, I don't know why they would knock them down, just leave them up. Um, so they knocked down these buildings, and instead of just throwing out the bricks, I don't know where the hell. So the city used the blue bricks to repave the uh, the streets. There was like, oh man, this is the biggest one, I think. That's exciting. That's 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 probably going to be the highlight of this tour. Unless you're a creep and you really like the Uncle Eddie story. All right, let's do it. We're going spruce. It's another tree.
Check out this place. Look at the Spruce Street Market. Spruce Food Market. Ain't that nice? It kind of has a little New York vibe to it. With the, with the flowers. There they are. Man, don't they smell nice. All right. Up here, that's the Kimmel Center. You see that big dome? Oh, this is good. This is another crime I witnessed. Uh, <laughs> right up there, that glass dome, that's the Kimmel Center. It's a place where they do, like, the Philadelphia Orchestra practices, or plays there. Um, they have, there's Broadway plays, Hamilton, all that stuff happens here. Um, my brother graduated... Central High School. Now, Central High School is the school where Bill Cosby went just for a little bit. But Bill Cosby's a goofball. He wants he wants to, he, like he wants to seem smarter than he really is. But he only went to Central for a little bit, and uh, because he went there for a little bit, he thinks he's like Central alum. So up back in my when did my brother graduate high school? Around, around two thousand. Uh, three or four my brother graduated high school and Bill Cosby had this thing he would do uh, with every central class everybody who went to central school every class that went to central school had one event where Bill Cosby gave a speech it was a thing he did so my brother's class had no Bill Cosby exposure whatsoever. So I watched Bill Cosby give my brother... The only reason I went to my brother's graduation is because uh, I... Because uh, um, I wanted to see Bill Cosby give a speech. Now listen, I, I loved Bill Cosby. I'm a Philadelphia guy. He was my... I, I wanted to be a comedian. He's like one of my heroes. Was, was. You know, now I found out what he did on his off time. Not really a... Not really a big fan. Uh, where are we going? Oh, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you. What the hell is it? We're gonna go up two blocks. Ah, did we really need? No, nah, I don't need to show you that. All right. So this is like the theater district. This is like, they call it the Avenue of the Arts. We have an art school in Philadelphia called the University of Arts. The campus is a little bit over there. I think it's all over in this little section. They have buildings. There's also a lot of theaters. This would be like the theater district. Um, it's also the center city area. So there's a lot of names for this section. This is called um, yarn bombing. I forget the term. Yeah, so this is yarn bombing, and these people come up. They they uh, tie on some of the stuff that they uh, knit, and then it stays here. It stays there for a while. It holds up pretty good in the um, in the rain. But after like two or three years, it gets kind of ratty looking. And then they just take it down. No problem. Here we are, 13th Street. We're in the neighborhood. I was here yesterday at the uh, Pride Festival. And it was... Hey, how you hit me, asshole? Um, it was such a big event. It was such a good time. Um, oh, shit. That pothole almost killed me. Watch out for that pothole, guys. But for like, it seemed like six blocks in the six block square radius, there was all types of people partying and having a good time. All right. Going this way. We're at 12th and Spruce. Oh, there's a hookah cafe. I, I, I just, I just don't get the hookah. In. I just, it's something I'll never understand. 
that has no appeal to me whatsoever. There we go. Look at this street. Look at this building. Mash and Wig Club. An old horse fountain. There. And on the back. That was for dogs. And then I think this part was for people. And Edward Weth uh, Wethrill, he uh, he's the one who do this the fountain was donated in the name of in his name. Uh, back in the eight, late 1800s, there was a hot summer. There was over, I believe they said over 30,000 horses died of dehydration this one summer. And because of that, there was a guy named Richard... Oh, there was a guy named... We'll call him Dr. Swan. Mr. Swan. Let's just say Mr. Swan. Mr. Swan started this thing called the Pennsylvania Fountain Society. And there were fountains all around the city of Philadelphia. Some of them still work. Four horses. Uh, so, yeah. This is Pennsylvania Hospital. America's first hospital. Man, it smells good. There's a there's a garden, like a uh, a medical garden that was built in ooh, let's say 1700s that they used to figure out medicine. So maybe I'm the wrong. Pennsylvania Hospital was America's first hospital, founded in 1751. By Dr. Thomas Bond, Ben Franklin. How about that? Ben Franklin wasn't even really a doctor. When you go to the other side, there's a big, little, uh, not big, there's a little tiny shed attached to the hospital. And it has a big wooden door. And they said uh, that was the gatekeeper's house. So you had to pay for what you needed before you go in. There's another great... This is one of the best fences in the city. Um, so you had to pay... Yeah, so if you wanted to get like your foot chopped off, you had to throw them seven pennies. I don't know what, what a foot... What it costs to get your foot cut off, but there's another little. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, that pie hole almost killed me. Oh, I saw my life flash before my eyes. Look at this little street. Ain't this pretty? Look at this. They they cut a space out for the trunk of the tree. <laughs> it's probably an old ass tree. Yeah, here's another different paved street. Red bricks, granite slabs on the side. This here, these used to be all over the city. And what these were for is uh you would tie your horse up to here, and then you get off and go say hi to your friend. You go, yeah, what's up? And they'll go, yeah, where's your horse? And you go, ah, it's tied up. Where the hell else would you be to put it? I wonder how often horse theft happens. Like, how often? There's, there's some more. Like, how often would your...
Mm. I'm thinking if I should turn it off or not. This is where I'll slow it down. No, no, it's on. There's nothing I can do about it. Oh, I hate when water gets wasted. Uh oh. Oh, could you imagine having your water faucet turned on? And then, yeah, you go to work all day, you come home and your water's just pouring out. That's like a, there you go. there's some more yarn, bomb, bo yarn bombs. Now these have been here for a while. You see, it's not too bad, getting a little shoddy. This is a problem in this section. Now this is like a, a pretty high class section. You gotta have a little buku dollars. Um, so I don't like the way they do trash in this neighborhood. Since the houses are so small, nobody really has trash cans. So people just fucking throw trash on the ground. Um, so instead of having, uh, waiting for trash day, these jerk offs, what they'll do is they'll just come here and leave their trash on the corner and it will stay there for a while until uh, the, uh, the, the, whatever they come pick it up and they're not, they're not supposed to pick that up every day they go every few days because you're not supposed to put piles and piles of trash like assholes there now we're coming across south street this is where there was a uh, mass shooting on uh i think it was saturday night say it was more assholes with um and I, I saw a lot of people on uh, Facebook. I have a lot of friends. Well, not, well, I mean, I'm not trying to brag. I got friends on Facebook. And whenever there's like a national tragedy, there's a thing where on Facebook you can mark yourself safe. So I saw a lot of my friends marking themselves safe. And I thought that was hilarious because uh, there's no way they would be on South Street at midnight. <laughs> they're not that they're just they just they just wouldn't be here i know <laughs> so i was here yesterday for a little bit and uh there was a little bit of news coverage a little bit of news media down here It's not, you know, it's not the same as the, the shooting at the school. That's going to get more media attention, and, and uh, as it should, right? But, um... Yeah, we got to do something, uh... Well... Uh, uh, fuck it, I'll, I'll tell you my opinion on gun violence. In America, we, we are past the point of no return. There is no way to fix the gun control issue. Now, maybe in the future, people who want to get guns will, will have to get background checks, which makes sense to me. Um, you know, I, I don't, I'm a, I suffer from, a, I'm bipolar. Uh, I don't think anybody who has the mental, who's mental like me, should have access to guns. I think I should take a test, and I don't think I should be able to pass the test. So that's just my, me. Uh, but if you want a gun, I you get a gun. But uh, there, 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 you know, people always say, "Oh, I want to see something happen. I want to see some type of reform." And there will never ever be any reform because we are, like I said, we are beyond the point of return. Um, I believe there's more guns than people. So, um, you know, you can watch a mass shooting and and get affected and be sad and and they are they're all fucking sad especially when it involves children um but you know there's nothing you could do to change now i don't know anything about the gun shootings the gun i think the one gun used on this mass shooting had an extended magazine clip Whatever, who knows? What are you gonna do? You gotta stop making magazine clips? Well now, they're gonna sell illegal magazine clips. On the, it, it, it's, what do you do? What do you do? 
You know what I do? I cry myself to sleep every night. <laughs> Not really. I just... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why anybody would be against a background check and a deadly weapon. It just makes sense. Here's another old horse fountain. But sometimes when things make sense. Uh, sometimes when you tell people a thing and they believe in something, right? Like sometimes if you if you, you if you're talking to somebody who believes something in something so passionately, there there's sometimes there's no way to sway their opinion because their beliefs are embedded in what the thought is and they won't think here at oh it doesn't matter. I'm not a I talked about this in therapy. Uh, Larry Fine from the Three Stooges was born here. Uh, and I believe there were four people killed here this weekend. Um, I don't know what Larry would say if he were alive today. I think he would say, get me out of this box. I'm buried. Who knows? There they are. Uh-oh. Got a little makeshift memorial like Princess Diana. Oh, I'm crossing a red light. They're going to have a makeshift memorial to me. I don't know if anybody was arrested yet. So. Man, Channel 10. Eh? Channel 10 and... There's channel three. There's channel six. So all the local news is here. I don't see any, uh, I don't see Anderson Cooper or, um, uh, that goofball Sean Hannity. I don't see any of these people. Oh, sorry. Yep. So that's the newest bullet hole in the collection of what could be bullet holes. Isn't that fantastic? Always something. <laughs>